Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time recording session, recorded session. Um, as always, guys, before we um, jump in, well, um, we'll have to have a quick read through our uh, risk disclaimer. Of course, in this session, as always, we'll have a quick look at the markets, what's happening with them, um, what to kind of expect. We'll we'll see some of the instruments that we looked at this morning in our, in our traders uh, espresso uh, video recording. So. So, yep, guys, as always, like I said, uh, before we jump in, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, also just uh, before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel to which you can always um, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JD Bank website and specifically our JD Research page, which we update on a daily basis. So, yeah, feel free to visit us, guys, here on jfdbank.com and click on the uh, research uh, tab right there. So, now then, um, just a quick mentioning here, um, the number continues to grow of people getting infected and of course the um, what's what else is very important is that the Italian death number continues to rise um, slowly of course but um, I mean it slowed down I mean uh, a little bit but it's getting close to the Chinese number so yep uh, probably um, it's the sad, sad thing to say but a few probably more days and we will overcome the Chinese figure here but again let's hope for the best I mean for now let's uh, hope everybody can recover quickly so let's have a look at the uh, the markets and how everything is uh, reacting in there um, now, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Now, uh, looking at this chart here, this is a four-hour chart. Now, I looked at DAX recently and basically what I was saying that as long as it remains below this downside line here, taken from the high of the 5th of March, then yes, we will continue targeting the downside, especially if DAX tr starts falling below the 8,000 initially 355 zone and then the 8,255 mark, which is the current lowest point of um of this week. So um, you can see that DAX is already very close to it, um, very close to this level. And the, the big question here is can we actually drop below this? And to be honest, uh, like to, to looking at ev how everything is going on right now, then to be honest, I mean, we could see a, a drift lower here. So for now, uh, be very careful guys here and uh, yep let's see um, if this can travel further south uh, towards this 8079 level and let me just show you what I'm talking about um, so I took I talked about this level previously so um, this area right here um, this one there we go let me just zoom in here so this level uh, right here around the 8 thousand and seventy nine zone is the lowest point of August 2013 um, of course likely below that we do have another potential target here uh, sorry not 79 but in 94 so there we go 8094 is the lowest point of, of August two, uh, 2013 the next potential target after that is the low of June 2013 which is around the 7,656 uh, level so keep your eyes on this one for now uh, we will only target the 8,094 uh, 8, level. We'll see how it performs around there. And uh, if it wants to drift further south, then yes, of course, uh, further declines could be possible. But for now, uh, let's keep it short and simple. We can see that the uh, index continues to respect this steep downside line taken from the high of the 5th of March. But um, for now, yes, I mean, we cannot really talk about any higher levels, high, uh, any upside, because we are still below this downside line. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, this one, uh, the, the markets have opened uh, a few minutes ago, and uh, the U.S. markets have opened a few minutes ago, and now we can see that the, uh, the index here continues to slide and continues to drift um, further down, further below that psychological 20,000 level. And let me just clear up this chart a little bit. So I'm um, looking at this daily chart. You can see how far and how 
rapidly we have declined uh, since around mid-February and uh, it continues to dr drift further south now the only thing it, to watch out here for today is probably uh, yesterday's low which is around the 18,917 zone so basically as long as it, it's it's trading above this then well uh, we will be very careful with the downside because for us to get excited about further declines we would need to see a nice good drop below this 18,917 zone and only then we will aim for further declines because again this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and yep uh, more probably sellers could be joining in however uh, continue observing this level if this area here the low of, la of yesterday 18,917 continues to hold maybe we could even see a bit of a correction earlier but again that's a bit of a let's say a bit of speculation here so that's why for now we're going to just continue monitoring this level and if we do get a drop below this 18,917 the next potential target to consider uh, could be uh, somewhere around here and let me just quickly put this one on the chart so we could aim for the highs of August 2016 um, and that's roughly around the 18,668 zone I do understand it's only a few a few points away from this level but uh, let's let's keep it short and simple of course the more better uh, target for us could be around 17,932 territory which is the uh, the lowest point of November 2016 um, and then yep we'll, we would take it from there but again all this all these two levels uh, we would only consider the, these two levels if we get a drop uh, below the low of yesterday which is around the 18,917 zone here uh, similarly like with the German DAX we do have some downside lines here so one of it one of which is this one here uh, taken from the high of the 20th of February and the other one is the um, the this one right here taken from oh, let me just finish this one off there we go taken from the high of the 5th of March so in a way if we if we see the price continuing to hold above the yesterday's low then maybe we could see a bit of a rebound here and a push higher however as I said uh, be very careful here um, and uh, yep if we would see a push higher here then we will still be very careful and probably somewhat bearish uh, because if the mm, if the rate if the price continues to trade below this steeper downside line then well I mean this this push higher could be as seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling so that's why guys for now uh, all eyes are on the yesterday's low which is around the 18,917 zone a break below that that would confirm a forthcoming lower low and yep we could start targeting lower areas slightly lower areas um, Brent oil now uh, here we continue to slide um, well it's not really looking good here but uh, what I was talking about yesterday let me just show you uh, this level here and let me just jump into a monthly chart now what I was talking about yesterday that if the price remains below the uh, the low of to, uh, to the lowest point of 2016 um, and uh, yep this is um, we saw a bit of a, a rebound here um, let me just quickly double check up oh. Okay, guys. So I mean, there's some for some reason there's no. Um, yep, the price kind of got stuck here. Um, so this is probably going to be a very bad example. I do apologize for this one, guys, because it seems that the price is stuck. But um, let me just jump probably into uh, WTI oil now. Um, hmm. Okay. It seems that the uh, the pricing here is a little bit on the yep there we go so WTI oil probably going to be a better example than the um, than the uh, the Brent oil for some reason Brent oil is kind of stuck so um, yep let's pick up on this one because in a way similar situation here um, basically the the commodity managed to close yesterday below the um, the lowest point of 2016 uh, which is roughly around the 26.08 level and uh, yep it, it today it's it's not really uh, far from the yesterday's low which is let me just quickly put this one on the chart uh, it's not far from the 20.08 level that was this is this is what the commodity managed to reach yesterday so for now um, it will be very careful
careful because yes, don't get me wrong, we are quite overstretched, oversold, um, even looking at the daily chart. But um, if this by any chance starts falling below the yesterday's low near the 20.08 level, then well, brace yourselves. We could see this one going f uh, into into the uh, teens, uh, into the teens level. So yep, guys, for now, we are at a very tricky spot. Uh, don't get me wrong, we do have some good potential areas of support here. Like for example, the lowest point of November 20, uh, uh, 2001, um, and that's roughly around the 17.12 zone. So it, to be honest, it would be quite interesting to see if it, we can reach that level. But for now, uh, let's see if the that psychological 20, 20 mark will continue to hold. If it can, then maybe we could go for a bit of a rebound here and aim for some higher levels. But again, for in order to aim for that uh, larger correction, we would like to see a push, um, a push back above the 26. Uh, point zero 0.08 level that's the lowest point of 2016 and then we could target some upside for now uh, we are at a very tricky spot in a way it could continue drifting further south but in order to get comfortable with that we need to see a drop below that 20.08 um, level which was which is the low of yesterday um, now then uh, gold so uh, gold also sold off yesterday, closed below this 200-day EMA. And I talked about this one yesterday, guys. I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this level here, the 1505, which um, continued to show good support but yesterday we sold off heavily and, and not only that we closed below this 1505 but we also closed below the 200 e uh, day EMA here so basically for now it's leaning we're leaning more towards the downside we will continue targeting the downside um, first we will aim for this uh, for this level here the lowest point of November 2019 which is around the 1445 mark but if that fails to withhold then yep we could be going all the way here towards this upside support line taken from the lowest lowest point of August 2018. Um, now, for, of course, this all this move lower could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. So if we look at this bigger picture, of course, so in a way, that's what we're going to be targeting for now. And this is the idea that we're going to be keeping in mind for now. But uh, from the very short term perspective, yes, there is a possibility for this one to drift further south. First, like I said, we will uh, continue targeting this 1445. But if that fails to withhold, then yes, we will aim for this upside support line taken from the lowest point of August 2018. Um, in case this suddenly reverses earlier, uh, to be honest, we're not going to do anything unless it travels back above the 1575 level. And only then we will consider some upside again all this territory here would be somewhat of a neutral one for us right now um, ripple so um, ripple of course looking at this picture here after it kind of struggled to move below the uh, 0.1290 territory you can see that the crypto right now is trying to climb back um, now, uh, yes, of course, uh, it, it may end up pushing further. Uh, it may end up pushing further north, but only up until this downside resistance line. So for now, basically the scenario that we're keeping in mind is this one right here, where we could see a push further north, but if it struggles to overcome this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 15th of February, now this is where we could see another round of selling. Yes, from the very short term perspective, we are considering a potential move higher here, maybe towards this uh, 0.1760 zone, which is the lowest point of December 2019, which maybe this this time could uh, play as uh, play the role of a, of a good resistance. Um, and if it holds here, then yep, uh, we could see another round of selling uh, where we will initially target this 0 0.1290 level. Uh, but if that f fails to withhold, then yep, the next potential target is around the 0 0.11 zone, which is currently the lowest point of March. For now, let's let's keep an eye on this in, in our heads, this scenario. In case this downside line breaks and the, we see a daily close above the uh, 0 0.1990 level here, then yep, Yep, we will aim for a bit of a, a larger correction here to the to the upside. But for now, let's keep your eye, keep your keep our eyes on the uh, this downside resistance line. Uh, USD CAD. Now, uh, very quickly on this. 
so the pair is uh, currently on a bit of a retracement. So after it managed to uh, almost reach the uh, this key area of resistance near the 1.4690 uh, level, which is the highest point of uh, 2016, uh, it failed just by a few pips from reaching that and uh, started drifting lower. Now, what I was talking about uh, today was, uh, and I jump, I'll jump into a four-hour chart. If we get a drop below the 1.44, uh, 33, 32 zone, somewhere around here, then yes, we could see a, a bit of a, a deeper extension to the downside here. So uh, that level, let me just show you what that level was and probably getting back into a daily chart, that would help. Um, this was the, mm, uh, this is that little inch inside swing low and let me just zoom in here. So that's this little inside swing low of 19th of January uh, 2016. So then if we get a drop below this level, the 1.4432 zone, then yes, we will aim for a deeper uh, correction to the downside. The next level for us is the high of uh, the 26th of January, which is um, around the 1.4325 zone. So coming back to the chart here, um, coming back to the four hour chart, uh, then yes, if we get a drop below this level here, the 1.4432 zone, then yes, we will aim for a bit of a, a deeper uh, extension to the downside here. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, of course, overall, we're still on an uptrend, but uh, we have distanced ourselves uh, quite a, a lot from this upside line, from this short term tentative upside line. But uh, yep, like I said, let's see how this is going to play out and keep your eyes on this level guys. Uh, GBP USD. So having a nice push higher. So after yesterday's um, after yesterday's drop here, a severe drop, uh, the pair managed to recover 23.6% um, uh, percent on the Fibonacci retracement. It did try to make its way towards the 38.2, but it fell shy of a few points from hitting that. Now, again, I can see that the rate continues to balance around this level. So maybe there could be still a chance for a bit of a larger correction to the upside. Now, this is what for now, this is what we are targeting. What we would like to see here is something like this, where the uh, the pair would travel higher, test this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 11th of March, and uh, then sell off again. So again, this is our ideal scenario. Let's see if it can uh, if it can do that. Um, if it travels higher here, keep your eyes on these 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci. That's around the 1.1707 level. And uh, yep, uh, slightly above that, we do have that 50% uh, retracement, which is around the uh, 1.1788 mark. So it could be a nice target as well. But for now, for now, guys, uh, at this point in time, we will we'll be very careful and cautious. Um, and uh, we'll continue observing this little territory, the 23.6% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. And uh, yep, we'll see how it um, acts around here. Um, and the last pair for this session is going to be euro dollar euro dollar sold off heavily uh, today and this is what i talked about this morning basically what i was saying that if uh, the pair struggles to push above the 1.0949 level then we could see a, a straightaway move lower here uh, but of course if it climbs above the uh, 1.0949 then we could see a bit of a, a larger correction to the upside maybe a test of this downside line and then another round of a round of selling. Um, now you can see here that um, the pair is um, testing this key area of support, the low of yesterday, which is around the 1.0808 level. Um, is that correct? Uh, 0802 area, approximately around there. Um, and uh, the pair even managed to drop below the the and managed to create a, a new low for uh, for this year. And basically, it fell all the way here. And let me just probably. Uh, zoom out here a little bit guys and let me mm, let me in general actually clear this chart and just draw everything from the beginning because we're getting a little it's getting a little bit messy here so um, the pair managed to find support today around the 1.0724 territory or actually is that 24 territory? Yes, approximately around there. The pair uh, drifted below the uh, the uh, the low of created a new low for this year for 2020, which the previous low was around the 1.0776. The the pair right now is currently balancing around this 1.08 territory, approximately around there. Um, 
it continues to trade below this downside resistance line. Let me just quickly draw, draw this one on the chart. Below this downside resistance line taken from the um, high of uh, the 9th of March. So, yep, approximately around here. Um, of course, everything's still leaning more towards the downside, especially if the pair continues to drift below this 1.08 level and then falls also below the 1.0776 zone, which uh, is the lowest point of February this year. Um, um, if it does that, then, well, we will aim for the downside again. But if it, if it continues to hold around this territory here between the 1.0776 and the 1.0... Eight levels, then, well, we could maybe see a bit of a, a correction here to the upside. But again, for now, it's too difficult to talk about any um, any correction uh, to the upside until we see a nice reversal candle here to the upside. For now, guys, be very careful here. Be continue observing this uh, area of support. Let me just quickly probably mark this for our future reference. That's what we're going to be currently monitoring heavily. This all this area of support. If by any chance we see see a daily candle closing below this territory here, then, well, I mean, further declines are possible. If we see a daily close above this, maybe we could hope for a bit of a correction here to the upside. We'll see how it performs uh, t today, this evening, and tomorrow as well. We'll see how all this is going to be uh, playing around here. But maybe, just maybe, we could go for a bit of a correction here to the upside tomorrow if the rate remains trading uh, above this territory here, above the 1.0776 and the 1.08 levels. If it remains above this, then yep, uh, we could maybe go for a bit of a correction tomorrow. But again, for now, it's a bit tricky. It's too early to talk about that. Let's see how this is going to play out. Anyway, guys, I hope you found it useful. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around. And thank you very much for being patient, guys, because I know that this video is coming out as a recorded session. Um, and uh, if, like I said, for now, the, these are the measures we have to take. And uh, hopefully, I will be able to run live videos soon. But probably, I'll just to kind of to manage your expectations, as well the live video um, is not going to happen for next week probably as well so uh, we still we'll, we'll, we'll stick to the recorded sessions until further notice but again guys thank you very much for watching and listening and uh, I'll see you tomorrow uh, in my traders uh, uh, espresso as always uh, the recorded session will come out uh, after nine o'clock or, or sorry after seven o'clock uh, GMT time thank you very much and bye-bye